What is your favorite creepypasta? There was a hunter in the woods, who, after a long day hunting, was in the middle of an immense forest. It was getting dark, and having lost his bearings, he decided to head in one direction until he was clear of the increasingly oppressive foliage. After what seemed like hours, he came across a cabin in a small clearing. Realizing how dark it had grown, he decided to see if he could stay there for the night. He approached, and found the door ajar. Nobody was inside. The hunter flopped down on the single bed, deciding to explain himself to the owner in the morning. As he looked around the inside of the cabin, he was surprised to see the walls adorned by several portraits, all painted in incredible detail. Without exception, they appeared to be staring down at him, their features twisted into looks of hatred and malice. Staring back, he grew increasingly uncomfortable. Making a concerted effort to ignore the many hateful faces, he turned to face the wall, and exhausted, he fell into a restless sleep. The next morning, the hunter awoke, he turned, blinking in unexpected sunlight. Looking up, he discovered that the cabin had no portraits, only windows. During the summer of 1983, in a quiet town near Minneapolis, Minnesota, the charred body of a woman was found inside the kitchen stove of a small farmhouse. A video camera was also found in the kitchen, standing on a tripod and pointing at the oven. No tape was found inside the camera at the time. Although the scene was originally labeled as a homicide by police, an unmarked VHS tape was later discovered at the bottom of the farm's well, which had apparently dried up earlier that year. Despite its worn condition, and the fact that it contained no audio, police were still able to view the contents of the tape. It depicted a woman recording herself in front of a video camera, seemingly using the same camera the police found in the kitchen. After positioning the camera to include both her and her kitchen stove in the image, the tape then showed her turning on the oven, opening the door, crawling inside, and then closing the door behind her. Eight minutes into the video, the oven could be seen shaking violently, after which point thick black smoke could be seen emanating from it. For the remaining 45 minutes of video, until the batteries in the camera died, it remained in its stationary position. To avoid disturbing the local community, police never released any information about the tape, or even the fact that it was found. Police were also not able to determine who put the tape in the well nor could they explain why the skeleton pulled from the oven was of completely different height and stature than the women in the video. It has been reported that some victims of torture, during the act, would retreat into a fantasy world from which they could not wake up. In this catatonic state, the victim lived in a world just like their normal one, except they weren't being tortured. The only way that they realized they needed to wake up was a note they found in their fantasy world. It would tell them about their condition, and tell them to wake up. Even then, it would often take months until they were ready to discard their fantasy world and please wake up. I'm pretty freaked out. That thing has been there for almost a week. The figure in the window. It looks featureless, only skin on a human frame, and it's pressing itself against the glass somehow. I don't know how it got there, and I don't know how to get rid of it. At first I thought it was a prank, a doll or mannequin that some jerks put there to scare me. But I realized as I walked out of my house to pull it away. It wasn't there. I shrugged it off, thinking that someone had hidden it while I was walking through my door. But I went back in and looked out that same window, and it was looking in, staring at me. I walked around my house, yelling for whoever it was to come out, but no one was there. The thing is hairless and naked, and it didn't look like it actually had eyes, or even a face at all. But its head is turned towards me when I enter the room. When I sit on my computer, I can feel its faceless hatred boring into my neck. But when I turn around, it's innocently turned in a different direction. Finally on Thursday, I tried to open the window, but it's stuck. I think the thing's hands are keeping it down. But I got a good look at its face. Its eyes and mouth are behind the skin, pushing outward. It stared at me, smiling. I pulled back a fist and smashed it onto the glass, determined once and for all to get rid of the glaring monster. I know I'm strong enough. That glass should have cracked. But it didn't. It shuddered under my hand, but it didn't break. And that smile just got wider and wider and wider, until I thought its head would break in half. It raised its own hand and bashed the window with its palm. It was mocking me. But I saw the faintest crack begin to appear where it had hit, and I backed away. No way did I want that smile in the same room as me. So I got a roll of duct tape, and I started covering the window. I couldn't look directly at it, I nearly shit my pants just knowing it was watching me. But I couldn't help it. I took a quick glance at that skin-covered face. A small peak. It was angry. That menacing grin was now a gaping frown full of teeth. 
The skin had ripped away from its mouth and I could see down its cavernous throat. A menacing rumble started to fill the house, and that hairline crack began to spread like splintering ice. I pulled down the duct tape. The rumble stopped, the split skin healed over, and it began to smile again. Now it's night, and the noise hasn't started again. There are no sounds, no rumble, no crackling glass. Everything's quiet now. But I can feel its claws gripping the back of my chair. I can hear its skin stretching as it smiles. It's watching me type. Little girl goes to bed. Every time she has to get up during the night to potty she holds her hand down under her bed. When her hound dog licks her hand she feels safe enough to go do her business. One night she hears a noise in her kitchen. She holds her hand down like always, and after she gets a lick of approval she gets up to go investigate. She goes downstairs to the kitchen and sees light coming from the refrigerator door not being fully closed. She opens the door to see what is in the way and she finds her loyal dog, broken and skinned, on the top shelf. Attached to the dog is a note that reads people can lick too. A man went to a hotel and walked up to the front desk to check in. The woman at the desk gave him his key and told him that on the way to his room, there was a door with no number that was locked and no one was allowed in there. Especially no one should look inside the room, under any circumstances. So he followed the instructions of the woman at the front desk, going straight to his room, and going to bed. The next night his curiosity would not leave him alone about the room with no number on the door. He walked down the hall to the door and tried the handle. Sure enough it was locked. He bent down and looked through the wide keyhole. Cold air passed through it, chilling his eye. What he saw was a hotel bedroom, like his, and in the corner was a woman whose skin was completely white. She was leaning her head against the wall, facing away from the door. He stared in confusion for a while. He almost knocked on the door, out of curiosity but decided not to. This disinclination saved his life. He crept away from the door and walked back to his room. The next day, he returned to the door and looked through the wide keyhole. This time, all he saw was redness. He couldn't make anything out besides a distinct red color, unmoving. Perhaps the inhabitants of the room knew he was spying the night before, and had blocked the keyhole with something red. At this point he decided to consult the woman at the front desk for more information. She sighed and said, did you look through the keyhole? The man told her that he had and she said, well, I might as well tell you the story. A long time ago, a man murdered his wife in that room, and her ghost haunts it. But these people were not ordinary. They were white all over, except for their eyes, which were red. Daddy, I had a bad dream. You blink your eyes and pull up on your elbows. Your clock glows red in the darkness. It's 3.23 AM, do you want to climb in bed and tell me about it? No, daddy. The oddness of the situation wakes you up more. You can barely make out your daughter's pale form in the darkness of your room. Why not, sweetie? Because in my dream, when I told you about the dream, the thing wearing mommy's skin sat up. For a moment, you feel paralyzed. You can't take your eyes off of your daughter. The covers behind you begin to shift. Baby, you just shut your mouth. David Bowie erupts from the covers tossing your dead wife's skin aside like one of his famous stage costumes. David motherfucking Bowie. You and your daughter scream in unison. This ain't rock and roll, this is genocide. He screams, materializing a flaming guitar out of the ether and into his hands. He proceeds into a jam session that results in a horrific block fire, killing 37 people. It was hailed by Rolling Stone as the greatest concert of the decade. This is the story of a day where there was all this blood, a man was walking around and blood started coming out of him everywhere. There was so much blood that IT filled up an elevator. He went to the store and there was just blood all over the place. People were slipping in IT and they were all grossed out. He tried to go swimming and all of the sharks went nuts and bitten everybody. He got chased by all the vampires ever. One time the blood got a kid and a dog. At the end of the day everyone decided they would send him to space so that he would stop getting blood everywhere. The scariest part is that the man was you. Or he was a lady if you were a lady, and you forgot that this happened. Once I hear story about girl in Chipligine. She was asleep in her bed, when she feel a con her hand. She thinks it is dog and goes to sleep. Next morning, she finds note on dresser with dead head of dog. It says comrades can lick too. She screams. Father comes upstairs, takes belt off and beats her. Moral of story is daughters should not yell in house like peasant. House is not Siberian pigsty. I worry daughter will never find good Russian husband.
You are home to watch Pravda on television about degenerate murderer who is on the loose. You look out the window door to Beatfield, and you notice man standing in the snow. He look like photo on television and he smile at you. You gulp vodka, picking up F1 to your right and dialing local militia precinct commissar. Back out the glass you look, pressing F1 to ear. Notice he now closer to you. You drop vodka in shock. No footprints in snow. It was reflection. You dullard. Your apartment is bulldozed down to make way for glorious tractor factory.